quick intro disclaimer here. I recorded this video before my Ultra Kill video went out and there's a number of new subscribers here since. First of all, welcome. I think my subscribers nearly doubled following the release of that video. Now this might seem like kind of a weird video to pop up in your subscription box for those who are new here. I just want to clarify this is sort of just a rambling video on some of my plans and thoughts as it pertains to my YouTube and Twitch stream. So if you are new here, this might be a bit of a confusing video, but feel free to stick around if you want to hear about some of my future plans here. In general, don't worry, there will be much more of the content you subscribe for coming very soon. But otherwise, if this update video doesn't interest you at all, there will be new, more normal videos, including more Ultra Kill, Splitgate, uh, and more coming very soon, as well as some new content on different games, uh, more in the vein of the Ultra Kill video coming shortly after that. Also, I'm on vacation the week this is coming out, so while I won't be around and actively streaming, I do plan to have some videos scheduled to go out that week, uh, this one included. So things are relatively normal on the channel. Uh, thanks for your patience while I figure some shit out, and uh, on with the rest of the update video. Hey, I usually try to keep my updates on my stream and channel pretty concise and focused, but this one I think is going to be a little bit more meandering, mainly because I have a lot of thoughts and not a lot of it sorted out, but I feel like it will be good for me to lay some stuff on the table. I started streaming almost six months ago. I can hardly believe it because time has absolutely flown by, but it's true. Honestly, I planned and prepared for months before I actually started streaming and then what my stream looked like once I finally started pretty much in no way matched what I expected it to be like, and that was fine. Good even, I'd say. See, I thought at one point I was going to turn on my stream a few times a week to just play Rainbow Six Siege with a sprinkling of other games and content. I'm insanely happy that that isn't how things played out and that I found my footing in other games and other types of content. I think I'm much happier doing that more flexible and it actually feels like there's more of a future doing that sort of thing rather than just tying myself to one game. But that said, uh, this whole thing certainly hasn't been without its challenges. I'm not perfect, but I'm definitely trying my best to make the content that comes out on both my YouTube channel and my stream as good as it can possibly be. All of that said, I still have a 9 to 5 day job and I still have to work around that as much as possible. This is one of my biggest challenges currently. When I started streaming, COVID was still going on with no real end in sight, but now with my life at least a little bit more back to normal and many of my normal responsibilities resuming, I don't have as much time in my life as I did when I first began. I'm, I'm trying not to let this change anything, and I've even scaled up the amount I'm streaming and videos I'm releasing since I started, but I'd be lying if I said at times it didn't feel like I have a full-blown second 40-hour a week job when you consider streaming, editing, uploading videos, brainstorming ideas, setting up equipment and software, and other tasks I do to support what is currently just a hobby that I make no money off of. And that is all just to stream a few times a week and put out like one or two videos a week, or even less depending on what I have going on in my life. Now before I get too much deeper into this, I just want to say that I'm not going to quit. I'm not even necessarily going to make any major changes to or scale back what I'm doing. I just wanted to put this all out there because I think it'll make me feel better and more vindicated in what I'm doing currently and the plans that I have in place for the near future. I have a lot of anxiety about streaming and I'm wondering if what I'm doing is right or worrying that I'm not doing enough or that I'm doing the wrong things. I've never been growth focused, so this is a new world to me. And I'm still not really overly focused on growth. My stance has always been that I'd be happy streaming or making videos for zero viewers as long as I was enjoying doing it or getting something out of it. And while I stand by that to an extent, I've also realized that streaming is the most fun when I'm connecting with other people, sharing interests with people, and putting out a product that I'm happy with and feel is validated by others enjoying it and connecting with it as well. So I hate to say it, but streaming to nobody just doesn't totally cut it for me anymore. I'm on track to get to affiliate on Twitch well within a year of streaming, and that's without really shilling my channel anywhere but on my own YouTube, certainly without follow botting or view botting or whatever. I'm obviously not bragging about this or anything. Certainly people get to affiliate way faster in completely legitimate ways, and it isn't exactly a monumental feat. But I do just like to think that I'm playing the long con a little bit. I know there are ways I could grind for affiliate, but I don't really want to do that. I want to have a body of work on Twitch and YouTube that I'm fairly proud of and have a meaningful follower, subscriber, viewer count, which to me will be achieved by either having a solid plan for every stream and video, or if I don't have a plan, at least doing something that I know I will enjoy and that that feeling will translate on stream or that it has the potential to become a good YouTube video. I wish I could say it was always that way in reality. Certainly there have been times where I've just streamed a really saturated game like Valorant or recently Splitgate to essentially nobody. And while I did it because I knew I would at least enjoy it myself and it would produce some clippable moments for a YouTube video, it does feel a little bad or even self-indulgent to end a stream like that and see I had zero new followers or that my average view count dropped a ton. 
even if I had a lot of fun just playing games that I love with my friends. So this is a balance I'm trying to strike here. What do I enjoy versus what do I think will do well on stream that viewers will enjoy? And where is the happy middle ground? Sometimes I want to start stream, but I'm just inflicted with a severe case of analysis paralysis. I either have no plan or feel like my plan isn't very good, and I'm just frozen trying to figure out what to do. What do I play? What do I talk about? Is there anything I should react to? It's almost like there's so many options that I can't decide and somehow none of them feel very good. And I almost just want to not stream at all, even though I know turning on my stream will probably have a net positive effect. I don't feel particularly fulfilled or proud of myself when I start up stream only to play Valorant for five hours. Even if I have fun and generally feel like the stream was good uh, by whatever standards, it, sometimes it's just the only thing that makes sense to do in that moment. The only thing I feel won't be half-assed when I can't come up with a really solid idea for my stream otherwise. And for lack of a better term, I do sometimes stream just to fill a quota. Because I see people who I enjoy that stream every day or most days and have consistent viewer base doing a variety of different things. I'm just not there yet. So I probably do need to be more mindful and growth focused than I am currently. But again, with a full time job, it's a delicate balance where I'm trying to play what I want and enjoy streaming while also trying to grow. There just doesn't really feel like a perfect answer. When I have good streams, I have plenty of people stop by and chat, follow, even return many times. Uh, it's a good feeling to have regulars and I genuinely appreciate the support of these people, especially if they check out what I'm doing, regardless of the category or whatever. Shout out to those people. However, it's a double-edged sword too. Now that I have an audience, I feel somewhat beholden to them. I know this is a feeling I'll probably just have to push through and get over with time, but for now I feel like I'm sometimes sort of desperately trying to keep my stream interesting while catering to a select few when in reality I should probably be focusing right now on what I think is best for me and my audience I want to attract. I realize those goals don't have to be at odds with one another, but I do sometimes feel a sort of cognitive dissonance about the issue. Being presented with two paths. One, catering to what gets me views or viewers right now, uh, even at the risk of being pigeonholed into doing only that thing forever, or two, focusing on what I wanna do and realizing that if I get really good at it, uh, eventually I will attract the audience that I want, it just won't necessarily be easy or quick. I think like with most things, a happy middle ground is probably the best and where I'll likely end up with some time. It just feels like not picking a side and I tend to not be someone who does anything less than all in or all out. Is it a character flaw? Sure but I'm recognizing it's something I need to overcome to get really good at the streaming thing. I sort of categorize my content into a few different groups and they're roughly as follows. And one, the general stuff. Content that I feel is enjoyable by mostly anyone that I think will attract the widest range of viewers. Like just chatting and react stuff, tier lists, some gaming depending heavily on the game and what I'm doing with it, of course. And then two, the passion project stuff. Content that I'm making because I personally enjoy it and feel really passionate about it. Stuff like Dishonored and GeoGuessr, especially things like the Geothon. The GeoGuessr stuff has been doing well in terms of views, but the Dishonored stuff has not really performed all that well. But my thought process is that this is an investment, that I'm building a foundation of content on certain games and types of games that I can expand on in the future and build an audience on. I do want to attempt more interesting and varied content on these games and other games in the future, but for right now, I'm sort of playing the long con with it. And then the third style is sort of the old style of content. The like clip farming, montage, highlight style FPS stuff or other games as well. I think this is something that I've really refined and feel comfortable making, but I recognize it is super hard to grow doing this without adding a significant twist or flair to it. I still really enjoy making this style of content and see the value in it personally. And I really enjoy putting a lot of effort into these videos, but as far as a time investment goes, I recognize that it's probably not generating enough engagement for me proportional to the time I'm putting into making them. So in the long run, these videos will probably be scaled down and eventually phased out, or at least tweaked or replaced with something that is similar but better. Though at the moment, they do make for good filler content intermittently, so I'll probably keep doing them. I haven't really quantified it, but I'd imagine right now I'm probably doing about an even split of the three. To me, this feels like a good compromise at the moment, but the trouble is that it means that people who found me while I was doing more general, evergreen, wide appeal content, or even the people who really connected with me while I was doing one particular thing that I was passionate about and they want to see me do more of that one thing, I have to kind of just tell them, sorry, you're probably not going to enjoy this very much when I'm on a five hour Valorant binge farming omen clips or just bumbling around looking for some dumb game to play with my friends on a Saturday night. The same goes for my YouTube content. I've had a few videos reach a moderate level of success and engagement, and every time this happens, there's a slight nagging feeling within me that I could just chase the dragon and keep making content like that forever for pretty steady linear growth, at least for a while. 
obviously that wouldn't be a good idea in the long run because the growth wouldn't really be organic and it would limit me to just doing one thing forever to even have a chance at retaining that audience. But the problem currently then that arises is that the pipeline from the video where people discover me to them ultimately subscribing, checking out other videos, and maybe even my stream is kind of broken. People will find a video of me doing a particular thing that they connect with and then want to see more of that thing. And then they check out my channel and what is this? There's a whole bunch of different stuff and maybe even most of which they aren't interested in. And then there goes any chance of these videos that gain some traction leading to actual growth. I'm like three channels in one right now, and the swings and in interest between certain types of videos can be massive. Could I just make reaction videos like the guns video forever? Just find up and coming trends and hop on them with a low effort react video? Sure. Do I want to? No. Quick side note here, I realize in hindsight this didn't come across how I intended. I made the guns video because I was interested in the game and thought the original videos from Kadai were very cool. Uh, but it was a relatively quick and low effort edit by my usual standards. I think if I tried to replicate this type of video regularly, it would feel inauthentic and quickly get stale. But uh, no, I'm not saying Guns was low-hanging react bait. I did genuinely find it interesting, and that was why I made the video. I may do other react content on the main channel in the future, but only when it's about something I am truly interested in and think I can bring an interesting viewpoint to, like Guns. And the success of that particular video is not a major factor in me wanting to do that. Could I convert my channel fully to a GeoGuessr channel where my streams and videos normally pull twice as many viewers as my other content? Sure. Do I want to? Eh. I like GeoGuessr and I'm proud of the content I've produced on it, especially things like the Geothon, but I just don't think that I bring anything so unique to the table with GeoGuessr that I could just totally build my entire channel on it. I do like it and I have come up with some fun ideas, but eventually the well will run dry, I think. I'd rather prolong the fun I'm having with that game as long as I can and make the content feel special rather than just milking it for all it's worth and burning out on it. On top of that, I don't want to necessarily give up some of the content that doesn't necessarily do super well view-wise, but that I really enjoy making and that I help feels like sharpen the sword, for lack of a better term, and improves the entire repertoire, variety, and quality of content that I have. If it, you know, helps me improve it being entertaining on stream, even when nobody is watching or chatting, editing videos, condensing or planning stream content around YouTube videos, then to me it's worth it. And of course, there's always the chance that one of those random videos could blow up, even if I don't personally think it's the greatest content I've ever produced. Like the guns video is a perfect example of that. So then I wonder, what is the solution? I don't want to totally stop doing that stuff because as I said, I do enjoy it. I've done a bit of Valorant, Splitgate, other FPS games off stream. And I've been able to farm some clips and create some videos that way without it necessarily being this black hole in my stream schedule. But I don't want to, nor do I have the time in my life to always play that stuff off stream and reserve only the most top notch content for the stream. The reality is that a lot of my gaming time is streaming time. I only have a limited time in my life to pursue both of these two hobbies. So functionally, they pretty much have to overlap. As such, there's always going to be some filler if I want to keep streaming the same amount that I have and I have to be realistic about how much content could truly bang, for lack of a better word. In a perfect world, I'd have the time in my life to focus on really making every stream and video perfect, but I just don't. Nor will I probably ever being realistic. I'm not going to and I don't really want to quit my job to stream full time. For sure, at least not where I am right now. If I were to ever do that, it would have to be a long way down the road when it could be a more sustainable venture, but being realistic, it probably won't ever happen. So what am I left with? Well, pretty much just exactly what I'm doing right now. Now, that isn't to say that there's no way for me to improve my stream. Without a doubt, I am and will continue to always look at ways to make my streams more interesting to a wider group of people while maintaining the vibe and type of content that I personally want to showcase and just not totally losing myself in the name of growth but if you're here now watching this, you already know me and you know what I'm about. So tell me what you like about my streams and or my videos. Ideally, I don't want to fundamentally change for growth, but if I can trim the fat and work on highlighting what people do love about my content more often, then I'd love to find ways to do that. All that said, I'm not afraid to admit when something doesn't work too. I've been doing YouTube for years longer than Twitch and my channel has undergone a number of transformations in that time and I'm not afraid to do it again. But for now, as long as all of the content I'm putting out is at least succeeding at accomplishing part of what I want to accomplish, then I'm happy with it. And make no mistake, despite all my whining here, things are trending upwards in a way that I'm happy about and I'm happy with the progress that I'm making. So while I don't have the answers to all the questions and dilemmas I've posed in this video, I do want everyone to know that I'm always thinking about this sort of thing. 
constantly striving for improvement, looking for ways to build on what I'm good at and what I like doing and continuing to get better at this thing. And that's just it. I'm not trying to say I thought streaming or taking content creation seriously would be easy. And honestly, I'm astounded by what I've accomplished even in just a short period of time. So that brings me to plans. While I'm not aiming to solve all of this in one fell swoop, I do have some ideas that I wanna share for things that will bring more structure to my streams and YouTube content, and I hope take some things to the next level. One of my videos that I'm most proud of on this channel is the Risk of Rain 2 video. I know that might seem weird to some people, but I think that video turned out great for what it was. This occurred on stream on a night where me and my friends couldn't really decide what to do. And I remembered that you could just modify Risk of Rain 2 to have as many players as possible. So we played with a ton of people and it was a blast. There was a solid idea at the core, but everything else was kind of just like emergent content, like playing with all bandits, for example. Now, the reason I liked this idea so much was because I felt it ticked every box. It was a game that I loved and an idea that I was excited about. It was unique, entertaining, discoverable. It was easy to convey what we were doing and I was happy about how the thumbnail and title conveyed it. This has been reflected in better viewership for this video too. Um, it was just fun to make and it provided an idea that I could easily build and expand upon in the future. And as a result, it was one of my best performing videos of the year. Again, it's all relative, but I'll take the wins where I can get them. I'm not going to pretend like that video was perfect. It was a little longer than was maybe necessary, a little aimless. It could have executed better upon the initial premise. Again, this was, part of this was just lack of planning. It was kind of an impromptu experiment, but all in all, if this was the average standard fare of content I was delivering on this channel, I would be incredibly happy about it. I was excited to make this video and I turned it around from stream to video in just a few days. The pipeline was incredibly efficient on this one as the quality and cadence of the content made this turnaround really quick. And while the view count on this video isn't that impressive in a vacuum, it is like triple what my earlier videos on this channel were getting and even a lot of my later videos and on a fresh game for my channel, no less. So yeah, this is quite close to what I'd consider to be the blueprint for what I want future videos on this channel to look like. Obviously there will be outliers and there'll be intermittent content that's more similar to my old style of content, but all in all, this is what I would like to transition for, to for my usual fair content on this channel. Not every idea is going to be as concise and exciting as the Risk of Rain video, and not every stream is going to be YouTube material, but ultimately I find this to be a pretty palatable format for distilling down my content into YouTube videos, and the streams are usually good too. Uh, it's a two-way street. On top of that, stream ideas. Right now I'm sort of falling into something kind of resembling a schedule. My personal and professional life is hectic enough that I'm reluctant to commit to a specific schedule, but as it stands right now, I stream three times a week, usually Monday, Wednesday, and some odd combo of Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. And the way that shakes out in terms of content normally goes something like this. Monday or Tuesday, I've been doing streams with my girlfriend, Britta, usually focused on reacting and just chatting content, maybe occasionally co-op games or odd challenges. We've even been doing cooking streams lately. And then Wednesday used to be the Wednesday Siege streams, but lately it's kind of just been a smorgasbord of other games, sometimes solo, sometimes with friends. I'm still kind of figuring out what I want to do there. Friday and Saturday, almost always playing games with friends, but occasionally other variety content, especially longer form, higher effort content like the Geothon will take place on Fridays or Saturdays usually, because I just have more time to do that stuff. And Sunday, uh, I'm usually playing solo games or variety content. I don't really see any reason to drop this schedule. It makes a lot of sense right now with my personal life and work schedule currently while still allowing for some flexibility if things come up. Again, as I don't rely on streaming for my income, I take breaks when they make sense. In fact, I have a couple vacations coming up, but in general, I'd love to stick relatively close to this plan. However, what I want to do is inject some more both variety and specificity into this framework while maintaining the same general vibe of what I'm currently doing. Uh, something I want to try out is doing a podcast with my friends. I think I'll live stream it first and then perhaps create a YouTube channel to dump the VODs onto. Eventually, maybe I'll put it on audio platforms as well if it does well and there's interest in it and it's worth my time, of course. I think this would be more of a shooting the shit type deal than anything structured, but we'd probably talk about games, our lives, just random crap we're interested in. My friends have always been a big part of my stream and videos, but I do think that exposing people to another side of them would uh, help with the enjoyment and connection that people feel with the content that I make with them. In general, I'd have a revolving cast of friends coming in and out as they please. I just want to keep it chill and easy for my friends to do, as like me, they're all busy with a lot of things going on in their lives. Uh, this is still early in the ideation phase, but I do think I will make it a thing before long. As far as the gaming content goes, I'm really working on building up some stuff, but at the moment I recognize it can be lackluster at times. 
I don't think I want to stop streaming games like Splitgate, Valorant, and Siege should I come back to it. But I recognize that my options for growth in these categories are basically to either grind and get really good at the games, or to do something super unique with them. Given that my stream is at this point a variety stream and not likely to change in that regard, I lean obviously towards the latter. I mean, that was kind of the foundation that my YouTube channel was built on, which was just playing Siege custom games in ridiculous ways with my friends. The trouble, of course, is that it requires me to get all of my friends together. Um, although there might be a viable alternative there that I will discuss in a moment. And uh, getting my friends together is becoming increasingly difficult. The Siege custom days were kind of lightning in a bottle type situation where everyone was playing and excited about the game all at once. And things like tournaments or just random custom games in general came very naturally as we had a huge pool of people interested in participating. Right now, we just don't have a game like that. Splitgate and Valorant are kind of close and may get there with time, but it's hard to really predict when a game will stick. I'm trying all the time to get more interesting and substantial events planned around these games, but things are a bit scattershot right now. Still, in the long run, my goal is to do something more like this when it comes to this type of game in the future. Hell, if I could always have a cool event or challenge planned for me and my friends, like every Friday, for example, that would be the absolute ideal. The problem, of course, is that it requires participation, and this is usually where things fall apart. People get busy or have a variety of interests and things they want to do. And yeah, it just isn't always possible to coordinate that kind of thing. And then, of course, there's single player games, solo games, co-op games. This is a bit more of a nebulous situation as I'm kind of always just going to be playing whatever I think will be fun on stream and might make a good YouTube video. And this is a bit of throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks situation, but I think I'm getting to a place where I'm pretty happy with the games I'm playing and the energy that I'm bringing when I do this sort of thing. So the next step for the most part is going to be just raising the stakes. I really love and appreciate what streamers like Atrioc and Ludwig do with games like this where the stakes are always really high even when they're trying a new game and it leads to really fun viewing experience even if you don't know anything about the game they're playing. So in the future the goal will be more fun challenges, more experimentation, or pushing the boundaries when I do stuff like this. So yeah, in terms of games that's about it. I'm not saying this can never change but I do think I'm slowly finding my niche in the kind of stuff that I'm good at and enjoy streaming. So. I see no real need to pigeonhole myself, but I think there is a component of re just recognizing what I'm good at and staying in my lane while also pushing my comfort zone. And that's just what I'm trying to do here. I think beyond YouTube and Twitch content, there's a few other things worth touching on. Again, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you watching and would love to hear from you in the comments or however, what you'd like to see and what kind of stuff you enjoy that either I could be doing or that you see other people doing that you like. I think as far as my plans beyond Twitch and YouTube go, uh, as you may or may not be aware, I have a second channel that was created really as a place to dump Twitch VODs off to, but I've also kind of toyed with it being like a clip channel. The tough part is, as a smaller creator, I don't know how to really navigate this in terms of the algorithm. I'd imagine posting both three to four hour long videos plus like some sub two minute videos is not really great for the algorithm, but I've also had some videos on this channel kind of pop off. In fact, I have one video that has more views than all except the guns video on my main channel. That said, other than being a dumping ground for VODs, this channel has kind of been aimless and I haven't really decided what I want to do with it yet. I think in the long run I will post more clips and specific highlights there, regardless of my trepidation to do so. This content comes third to my main YouTube and Twitch content, but seeing as it is pretty low effort way to get some stuff out there, I think the investment is worth it. So if you haven't already, drop me a sub there. It should really help that channel get off the ground and will tell me that people are interested in what I'm doing there and, uh, and that I'm not just shooting clips and VODs off into the void for nobody to watch. I've also kicked around the idea of creating a Discord. I know this is something that a lot of bigger creators do that ends up strengthening their community and creating a lot of interactive content for viewers. I'm hesitant because, well, I'm so small that I worry the result is that the Discord either won't get used or that it does get used, but by not well-meaning people. I don't really have the time to intensely moderate a Discord on top of everything else I'm doing. And my moderators on Twitch currently are like my girlfriend and a handful of my friends and I would never ask more out of them than their already minimal responsibilities as my mods. That said, I think I'm talking myself out of it for no real reason. I think the pros far outweigh the cons and even if it doesn't get used for much right away, I think having it for people who are interested will be a good thing in the long run and will ultimately give me more avenues for connecting, promoting and generating content alongside people who like what I'm doing. To touch on something that I briefly brought up before, this would be a good opportunity for me to create and find a larger group of people interested in playing games and participating in content rather than having to rely on my friends to do group activities. I can pull from the Discord to find people to build seats, for lack of a better term, in Valorant games and stuff like that. 
I make no promises and I know that it will take a, a little time to find enough people for stuff like this, but this is another thing that I view as a bit of a long con. I'll update again when I have more info on this. Uh, I haven't totally decided what I want to do and running a public discord is still a new world for me, so I haven't fully committed to how I want to execute it yet, but uh, I'm going to keep this one in the back of my mind. Lastly, this isn't really a plan as much as it is me saying just I'm aware my social media sucks. <laughs> I kind of have no motivation to keep it updated because, well, nobody follows me. So while I'm not going to beg you to follow me, I have a bit of a chicken and egg situation here. Do I just start tweeting and posting into the void in hopes that people will notice and eventually follow? Or do I need people who are interested in following me already there so I have a reason to post updates and whatnot? It's probably the former, but it's a mental block I still need to get over. My socials, as always, are linked in the description if you're interested in following. It might help me realize I need to actually use those for something if I, you know, actually have some followers. <laughs> and then I think that's about it. That's about it, I say, after talking for like half an hour straight. I know probably nobody watched this whole thing, but it's a video I've been wanting to make for a while. So even if me just sort of saying this to no one helps me feel more committed to some of these ideas and sort of speak them into existence, for lack of a better term, then I think it's still a net positive for me to have put this out there. If you did watch, though, thanks. I appreciate you listening to my rambling and genuinely appreciate you being here. Uh, I hope I didn't alarm anyone that I was going to quit or that things were going to seriously change. I just wanted to admit that I'm in a bit over my head, but that I'm working on it and I want to do a good job at this. So, uh, thanks again. But eventually the well will run. But eventually the well will run. Hit that like button. All right. Smash that bell. Hit that hit bell this, button. Hit destroy the destroy my pussy. Button. Subscribe to Dumper Man.